Now, did Malcolm Turnbull send you an advanced copy of his book or have you had to satisfy yourself with the newspaper reports and what do you think of his criticisms of uh, so many of his colleagues? I haven't been favoured with a forward copy of uh, uh, Malcolm's book and uh, I'm pleased about that because chances are I would have uh, sent it back, uh, put return to sender on it. But look, uh, that said, uh, I think it's quite undignified and unprofessional. You see the books written by Prime Minister Howard, Treasurer Peter Costello, uh, Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson, and you see statesmanship throughout those books. The excerpts that we've had from Malcolm's book suggest uh, vindictiveness, um, trying to get even, salacious gossip, uh, breaking confidences. It hardly puts him in the st status of a statesman. It uh, really is disappointing for Australia, but I think in particular for Malcolm himself, a very disappointing uh, production. You don't think having been through what he went through and having been brought down in the way that uh, he was, he's got the right to uh, correct the record or put the details out there, the record out there as he sees it? Oh, look, uh, everybody in this country has the right to do what they want, just as long as they don't defame people. So uh, good luck to Malcolm doing what he's doing. But there is a complete lack of self-awareness here. Uh, look, was he brought down? Yes. I would say by he was the architect of his own demise uh, by foolishly calling that leadership spill. Um, you always keep people guessing as to how much support you may or may not have. You don't actually prove how little support you do have, and that is what he did by calling that a precipitous leadership spill. But the lack of self-awareness, this is exactly what Malcolm and his group did to Tony Abbott and myself. Yeah, and that's, yet, a pretty, that's a pretty key point. What about setting uh, up the Guardian Australia? What about a Liberal leader setting up this green left uh, publicity machine? Chris, it would be like Adam Band helping to set up the Spectator. It is a, a complete sellout of all your beliefs, one would imagine, if you were the leader of the Liberal Party to help establish the Guardian. Whatever possessed him to do it, Financially, I understand it's not a success. Uh, one might imagine that it would never uh, that it would never have been a financial success. But why he would have embarked on this, I don't know. And then his cooperation with particular journalists in doing so, who have never been friendly to the liberal side of politics, is uh, leaves I think everybody now understanding why people like myself had assessed Malcolm Turnbull relatively early on. And uh, whilst I got a few brickbats uh, in the past in relation to my commentary on Malcolm Turnbull, I don't think anybody these days would be critical of my assessments. And I think my assessment these days is completely vindicated, not by anything I've said, but everything that, have ca that has come out of Malcolm Turnbull's mouth and out of his pen. Well, I've got to say, I got to read today the section of the book that deals with the Godwin Gretsch affair. Now, I yeah. was his chief of staff then, and I know you yeah. and Malcolm worked very surreptitiously together on that whole episode. And I'm here to tell you, he accepts the full culpability there. He's very honest about the fact that it was he and you having dealings with Godwin Gretsch, and that uh, they were fooled. Uh, you were fooled by Godwin Gretsch for whatever. Gretsch's motivations were, that, that must relieve you at least, that there's, uh, there's no attempt uh, to, uh, to duck shove the blame there. Oh, well, Chris, I'm very happy that Malcolm's done that because uh, um, I was, if you like, the uh, council uh, acting on instructions and I had advised Malcolm that we should not go after Kevin Rudd because I did not think there was the sufficient evidence there because there was no actual email. We had been provided with other emails relating to Wayne Swan. I thought that was a very strong case and was worthy of prosecution at the uh, Senate hearing. But uh, with Kevin Rudd, I had counselled against it. And I then was the first out of the leadership group to uh, indicate that I thought that the email 
was, or the alleged email that we'll have we've to never seen, we'll was have, a fake. Well, I, I remember you saying that. I was on the call. That was the next yeah. day. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through all this in detail one day. But uh, as yeah. I say, yeah. Malcolm Turnbull's been very forthright about that. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, though, about the other media conspiracy he runs, and that is that he was brought down by News Corp, Sky News, 2GB. To what extent did you deal with News Corp journalists or editors when you wanted to see Malcolm Turnbull brought down as Prime Minister? Oh, well, look, uh, no, nothing of the like occurred, and it just seems like a rerun of Kevin Rudd's allegations. It's uh, uh, quite sad when people cannot engage in sufficient self-reflection and understand uh, the reason for their downfall, and therefore they seek to blame everybody else other than themselves. And sadly, that's what Kevin Rudd has done. Similarly, Malcolm Turnbull's doing it. How's Malcolm Turnbull going to be remembered within the Liberal Party with, uh, you know, the official organisation, uh, historic events and the like? Do you think he's uh, going to be, continue to be welcomed at such functions? I would think Malcolm would find it exceptionally difficult to go to such functions, given the way that he has breached confidences with so many people uh, within the Parliamentary Party and uh, his sellout of Liberal Party beliefs and now his own uh, willingness to indicate his support of getting The Guardian underway in Australia uh, would, I think, leave every single Liberal Party member in Australia shaking their head in disbelief. As I said earlier, it would be like Adam Band trying to sponsor The Spectator magazine. It just does not stack up. And what it shows you is that Malcolm was never a true Liberal, and he, in fact, uh, was in it for one thing, to become Prime Minister, and uh, that was not the most successful uh, Prime Ministership in Australian history, to Eric, put it mildly. Eric Abetz, thanks so much for joining us.